Well, we're here in early mid-August to talk about corn earworm today. And I'm excited to talk about corn earworm because it's our top insect pest in soybeans in the state. You know, when I first showed up here in 2009, 2010 was a big corn earworm year. And I thought, man, corn earworms are in every soybean field in North Carolina, but they're not. And that's why it's so important that you scout and treat only when necessary. These tools are your best friend. We use in wide row soybeans, 30 inches or greater. This is a sweep net we use in narrower rows. Our threshold varies depending on the cost of the control of the insecticide, as well as what the crop is worth. This year, roundabout, it's about five corn earworms and 15 sweeps, and a sweep counts as a swoosh in the net. These can be very destructive to our crop, so it's important that we treat them, but it's important that we don't spend money when we don't have to. Check for double crop beans, later planted beans, they love to lay in soybeans when they're flowering, so it's very important that we catch those infestations as we're entering R3 and make treatment decisions from anywhere from R3 to R5. You know, when we're sampling corn earworm, we wanna make sure that we hit that threshold before we make a treatment decision. We have good beneficial insects that'll take care of populations, and we even have diseases that'll sometimes wipe our populations out. But if we do hit threshold, it's important that we use the correct insecticide of choice. Fortunately, in soybeans, we have some very good products, including Intrepid Edge, Steward, and Tracer. We have another good product known as Besiege or Prevathon. While it's effective for corn earworm, we want to avoid using it in soybeans so that we can preserve its use in cotton, where we have many fewer insecticide options. If you'd like to look at our online threshold that's dynamic and moves with the cost of control as well as the cost of soybean, you can visit the website listed here. Thank you.